standard 6 geography chapter number 5 temperature do it yourself take a torch light and keep it stable at one place take two large paper sheets large enough to accommodate its entire beam paste the papers on two flat boards hold the board perpendicular to the beam as in figure 5.1 a Draw the outline of the area lit up by the beam. Name the paper A. Now use the other paper. Hold it in such a way that it makes an angle of 120 degrees with the beam, shown in figure 5.1 B. Draw the outline of the area occupied by the beam. Name the paper B. Observe both the papers A and B. Now tell. On which paper does the beam occupy a larger area? Answer. The beam occupies a large area on the paper that is held in such a way that it makes an angle of 120 degrees with the beam. On which paper is the area smaller? Answer. The area is smaller on the paper that is held in such a way that it makes an angle of 90 degrees that is perpendicular with the beam. Now change the angle between the beam of light and the paper. Observe the changes that occur in the area occupied by the beam of light. What is the relation between the angle of the paper and the area occupied by the beam? Answer. When the angle of the paper with the beam is of less degree, the area occupied by the beam is smaller. On the other hand, when the angle of the paper with the beam is of more degrees, the area occupied by the beam is larger. Explanation. Sun rays coming towards the earth travel in straight lines. However, as the earth is spherical in shape, these are not perpendicular to all the parts of the earth's surface. In some parts, they are perpendicular whereas in other parts, they are slanting. Let us see what effect it has on the earth. The perpendicular rays occupy less area, as shown in figure 5.1a. The part where the rays occupy lesser area receives bright sunlight and greater heat. Hence, the surface there gets heated more and the air becomes hotter. The slant rays occupy a larger area, as shown in figure 5.1b. In this area, sunlight appears less bright and there is less heat. Hence, the surface there gets less heated and the air too is less hot. Do it yourself. The region marked A in figure 5.2 receives perpendicular rays while the region marked B receives slant rays and in the region marked C, the rays are extremely slanting. Using a scale, measure the lengths of the lit up portions on the earth's surface in A, B and C regions. Measure the width of the rays shown between the earth and the sun. Considering the parallels of latitude marked in the figure, tell the regions where the temperature will be high, moderate and low. Answer. The temperature will be high in the regions receiving perpendicular sun rays. The temperature will be moderate in the regions receiving slant sun rays. Answer. The temperature will be low in the regions receiving extremely slanting sun rays. Discuss this in the class and write the answers in your notebook. Explanation Sun rays falling on the earth are straight and parallel to each other. However, we have seen that due to the spherical shape of the earth and the resultant curvature of the surface, they occupy a larger or lesser area. This leads to unequal distribution of the heat received from the sun, resulting in decreasing temperature from the equator to the north and south poles. Based on the distribution of temperature, the earth can be divided into torrid temperature and frigid zones or tropical temperature and polar regions. Though latitude is the main factor, there are other factors also which influence the distribution of temperature. However, their effects are limited to a particular region. These factors are as follows. Nearness to the sea, continentality, height above the mean sea level and physical setup of a region are factors that lead to diversity in the climate of different regions. Other than these, factors like cloud cover, winds, vegetation cover, urbanization, industrialization, etc. also influence the local climate. Can you tell how will the rays fall between 0 degree and 
23 degrees 30 minutes north and south. Between 0 degrees and 23 degrees 30 minutes north and south, the sun rays are perpendicular. As its effect, this area receives bright sunlight and greater heat. Therefore, this area is known as torrid zone. 23 degrees 30 minutes and 66 degrees 30 minutes north and south. Between 23 degrees 30 minutes and 66 degrees 30 minutes north and south, the sun rays are slanting. As its effect, these areas receive less bright sunlight and less heat. Therefore, these areas are known as temperate zones. 66 degrees 30 minutes and 90 degrees north and south. Between 66 degrees 30 minutes and 90 degrees north and south, the sun rays are extremely slanting. As its effect, these areas receive extremely less bright sunlight and extremely less heat. Therefore, these areas are known as frigid zones. Use your brain power. Tell if the following statement is right or wrong. Give reasons. In order to understand the climate of a region, the latitudinal extent is more useful than the longitudinal extent. 1. Statement The given statement is right. 2. Reasons Temperature does not change as per longitudes. Temperature changes as per latitudes. The temperature decreases from the equator to the north and south pole. Let us perform an experiment to see that there is a difference in the heating and cooling of land and water. Do it yourself. Take two pots of the same size and fill them with water equally. At sunrise, keep one of the pots inside the house and the other outside. See that it remains in the sun all the time as shown in figure 5.4b. In the afternoon, walk barefoot on the floor inside the house and feel the temperature of the floor. Feel the temperature of the water in the pot inside. Perform the same activity outside the house and get the feel of the temperature of land and the water kept in the sun. Write down your observations about the temperatures of land and water. Do this again around 7 in the evening. Note your observations again. Now you can remove the pots. Discuss all the observations you have noted in the class. Explanation you must have realized that the land cools down earlier than the water. The water kept outside in the sun is still a little warm. Due to this difference in the heating and cooling of land and water, the air over the land gets heated faster and also becomes cooler rapidly. The air over the water gets heated slowly and also loses the heat in a slower manner. In the coastal areas as compared to continental areas, the temperature of air is lower during the day but warmer at night. Contrary to this, the temperature of air in the continental areas is higher during daytime and lower at night. In the coastal areas, because of the heating of seawater, water vapor gets mixed in the air. This water vapor holds the heat in the air. As a result, the air in the coastal areas remains moist and warm. Conditions in the continental areas are the opposite. As water vapor is absent, the air remains dry. This leads to sharp differences in the day and night temperatures. The difference in the maximum and minimum temperatures of a day is called diurnal range of temperature. In short, the difference in the day and night temperatures is less in the coastal areas and more in the continental areas. For example, Mumbai temperatures are even, but at Nagpur, they vary a lot. In the coastal region of Konkan, the range of temperature is less but in Vidarbha, the range of temperature is found to be higher. Therefore, coastal areas have an equable climate, whereas in continental areas, the climate is extreme. For example, the climate of Mumbai is equable, whereas in continental locations like Nagpur, it is extreme. The difference in the mean temperatures of summer and winter is called annual range of temperature.